our next guest is um, no stranger to uh, to uh, success in football. But more importantly, ever since uh, life after football and life after college, uh, Ricky Ellison has been joining us. Uh, for, we've been talking to Ricky for years about our missile defense system and the ups and downs of it all, particularly uh, when you start talking about purse strings. And right now, you know, we got this uh, this this worry about the budget going forward. Particularly when it comes time to the military, there are some things that are good and some things that are bad. Now, I told you yesterday that I found this report from the uh, Missile Defense Advocacy Alliance, and Ricky gave a speech talking about how U.S. missile defense soldiers are overburdened, uh, they're under-resourced, they're in, they've been deployed to a lot of places for a lot longer than they should have been, and it doesn't look like there's an end in sight. Now, the real problem, I think, might, uh, might lie on, you know, our, on importances. And it's pretty apropos that we talk to Ricky uh, right now because uh, it's interesting when you're standing in line with your handout at different departments of the government to find out how much you're going to or not going to have. And our missile defense is probably more important now than it's ever been, particularly with all of the unrest all over the place. So with that, we say in spite of that, uh, happy holidays to uh, Ricky uh, Ellison. Good morning. Good morning, Mike. How are you doing? How are you doing, Ricky? I'm good. I just got back to Washington. I've been traveling quite a bit. I was over with our troops in Fort Bliss and Fort Sill in Oklahoma and Texas last week. What similarities, because I was watching uh, some video of you in Fort Bliss and listening to part of your speech and reading part of it on the air yesterday. What's, uh, what, what are the similarities between what's going on there in Fort Bliss and what's going on, say, here in Hawaii uh, at Barking Sands and other places? I'm talking about people that are important to our missile defense. Well, I, I think, you know, first off, we're kind of an unknown branch compared to all the other branches in the Army that get a much more notoriety and support than what we do. So the, our, our soldiers, our men and women, are in these uh, exacerbated 12-month deployments, which is unheard of basically for any other branch. Isn't it interesting that where these people are deployed are in the hot spots of the world? I mean, they're right on the edge of if something happens, they're in the middle of it. That's correct. And it's just a very tough duty to ask a soldier to go out and leave his family for 12 months. I mean, we do it for nine-month combat tours where they do it for nine months, but 12 months is, is especially hard. And because of the, sex, uh, the, the, the budget cuts and so forth, sequestering in Congress, they've even reduced their benefits. So they don't get to take a two-week leave in that entire 12 months. They don't get the extra bonuses. They don't even get a combat patch. So that was something that, that, yeah, that I feel just, re- really strong about, that, that you know there shouldn't be inequality across the services and something like they're doing. When I was important. looking at where these folks are deployed, these men and women are deployed, I mean, you know, we don't want to say Guam is a foreign country because Guam's one of our places. But outside of Guam, you're talking about Bahrain, uh, Kuwait, yeah. Jordan, Qatar, Turkey, uh, the United Arab Emirates. Jordan. Yeah, where all of the heat is. And these conditions are horrendous. I mean, they, they're 140 degree summer heat I mean, in the desert. It, it is a tough, tough uh, work environment for them out there. And that, that's the critical ones. The, the our, our assets in the Gulf, Persian Gulf region and, and around Syria are the ones that have, the, that have gotten the most uh, work. And they do it in cycles. So they just they train them, they prep them up in El Paso, uh, Fort Bliss, and they send them for those 12-month deployments, and they send them back in rotation because we don't have enough people. Yeah, now, you know, you've you got to ask yourself the question, because you know that these men and women wouldn't have it any other way. I mean, obviously, they're being, I, I don't want to say taken advantage of, but they're being taken advantage of because of their commitment to what they're doing. They're, they're expected to get deployed longer. Uh, most of the time in this government of ours, Ricky, and, and I'm glad you brought up what you did, we just throw money at it. Uh, isn't this a case where, like you said, where uh, sometimes missile defense is not the darling of every, on everybody's mind? No, and, and, and you know it, it, it's not fair. I mean, they should be treated like the other soldiers in the other branches. They should not be the ones that have to do the extra three month duty time that they're doing because we don't have enough resources or enough personnel to make that change. Those other, there are other branches are resourced in infantry and special ops and. In our armor, our cavalry are, are, have enough so they can rotate those nine-month rotations. We don't have enough personnel, so we can't do it. So we've got to get more personnel in that structure. So is, we there, can is there no through. budget for it? I mean, are, are they capped, the, the number of personnel? Well, there, there's budget, but they're putting it in equipment and other things. They, yeah. They've got to put it in manpower. And you, yeah. We need an extra uh, battalion, I mean, uh, an extra Patriot battalion. We have 15 battalions, and those battalions are around 600 people. We don't have, 
we need another battalion so we can rotate ah, them through okay. um, in, in, in the area. Or we have to decrease the demand, but we're not decreasing the demand for it because our combatant commanders in those regions and PACOM, CENTCOM are asking for this stuff because it's preserving peace in the area and, and protecting their offensive capabilities. Yeah, and that's where we come in. I mean, here in Hawaii, as you know, uh, we're looking at some serious base cutbacks uh, at Schofield and uh, for the Army and probably other branches as they, quote, try to streamline the personnel to save money and still get the job done. Uh, in a way, aren't they kind of kidding us a bit and saying, oh, yeah, we can still be as effective with less people? Well, you have to have people. You have to have operators to do that. You can have the best equipment in the world and the most fancy technology, but if you don't have the operators that operate that equipment, it doesn't mean much. And you've got to maintain the equipment as well. And I, I think we've made a big change. We have a four-star Army general right there in Hawaii, General Brooks, that has been the strong advocate of putting our missile defense assets in the Pacific, and he's the one that meets with the biggest armies mm -hmm. in the world that are based in the Pacific to help us with that. But we've got to get more personnel in this critical position of being able to man missile defense capabilities. You know, when I said earlier um, that everybody's sitting on the edge of their seat worrying about funding and ongoing resolutions and everything else, um, I, I would imagine, and you can, I'm sure you, you know, hobnob with, with people in, in other sectors, uh, isn't the big picture, I mean, you need, in your in your advocacy, you need more attention called to this, and, and I'm kind of worried that we're starting to we're starting to back off in our commitment for the ongoing expenditures and, and trying to make budget instead of make sense. Well, I think, I think this is the last time you'll see that because you have now have a full Republican House and a Republican Senate in the next two budgets that are going to gonna force funding into this area specifically. I have confidence in that, that they will f challenge the president in getting funding for our missile defense capability. That's going to change. We were, again, in a different situation the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you'll see a, a fundamental change. There will be a fight because I think the, the administration still doesn't want to spend what our Congress would want to spend on that capability. But you got to remember, man, it's keeping us from going to war. It is preventing uh, situations that can get out of hand especially as we see what's going on with North Korea. Now we see China getting involved and in trying to stop our missile defense deployments in Korea or in Japan or in Okinawa or on Guam. We've got to continue our status quo. We're not asking for anything different. We're asking to keep our status quo the way it's been for the last 50 years. China wants to disrupt that status quo, and they want more influence. You, you, know, what I, you know, I think it's hysterical. we got Hollywood. Perched on the edge of this big controversial thing about Kim Jong Un, I mean we're we're right in the middle of probably the most delicate uh, time we have between North Korea and South Korea trying to get along with each other economically, which is not happening very well. And we got this this whack job out leading those people, and now he's got reason to maybe have his guys hack Sony for heaven's sakes. Got nothing to do with the government or missiles; it's got to do with a movie that's coming out. Yeah, but but our best and newest modern missile defense system called the THAAD, which is in Guam, that changed oh, yeah. the game. We want to put that in Korea because you can put that in Korea and you can protect all of Korea with that one system that goes above the Patriot system and below the Aegis ship system that that they're having a very challenging time because China is, is putting pressure on the opposition government in Korea not to do it. Are there and, people, Ricky, that don't understand what missile defense is rather than what, what aggressive defense, you know, offense is? I, I, I think... People lose that sight that this is not a offensive system. This is a stabilizing system, mm -hmm. and putting a system like that in Korea is going to stabilize the environment much more than putting a bunch of offense in there or having new offensive weapon systems to go in in there. That's it's stabilizing. It's, it's certainly a capability that's going to shape and protect what we've got there, and let that that you know our biggest selling point is that. Democracy and the great economic, the economy that, that Korea has. That, that that's the biggest selling point in the region for for U.S. Uh, capitalism and for Amen. U, yeah. uh, but, U.S. I mean, the proof's in the pudding. It, the proof's in the pudding. We, I mean, we we've, we've been saying what they say is outsourcing. Uh, we're outsourcing a lot of uh, stuff to China, and China's not exactly our friend. They're, they're kind of buying us. In the meantime, here's North Korea. Uh, looking down at South Korea, South Korea wants to play with us. They want to industrialize. They want to mechanize. They want to, but they want to be safe while they're doing it. Right. 
and, I, and, I, and it's just the aggressive postures of, of China trying to force change of influence, change of power in that region by, by doing I mean, there were 500, over 500 uh, uh, territorial um, sorties that, that the Chinese aircraft had, had came into the Japanese airspace, 500 in this past year. Uh, I mean, so, so there is movement there trying to back us off uh, in, that, in that part of the world. You know, here in Hawaii, we call it everybody's making big body, right? They fly yeah. their planes real close. They, they they flex. They they show their strength and and they and they march in unison. And they and they show their missiles in the square. In the meantime, uh, we can say, yeah, bring it. I mean, we got stuff that can knock your stuff down. Bring it on. And we need to keep making Hawaii our center point for the Pacific. And that's big. One of the big things the new the new uh, PACOM commander she put in that integrated air missile defense center that's at, at Schofield Air Force Base, which allows our joint services all to come into practice having our defense with our offense. And we're going to be able to do that with Japan. We're going to bring Japan into Hawaii. We're going to bring Korea into Hawaii so they can see how we work as a team because we're still not a team yet. We're, we're individuals and we're individual services. We need to create a team atmosphere so we don't have to shoot all these bullets from, the, from all the different groups. We can just shoot one, be much more efficient yeah, than what we're doing. And, and I want to be able to, you and I get together and focus on that be after the holidays, but you were talking about this teamwork business. How about our guy Marcus Mariota, uh, Ricky? <laughs> I mean, come on, man! You just won the tree. Just won yeah, the. Yeah, he was. Man. He's the true. He was head and shoulders above all the other NCAA athletes that played the game. This guy was great to see him. Great to have a Polynesian. Has there been a Polynesian that's won a Heisman? I think is he the first one. It, 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 you know, you would have been the first one, but, but <laughs> it, it, it didn't work. It didn't work out for you. You didn't know what football was until much later. But yeah, he is. And and that's I mean, a great. We, that's we, a great accomplishment. We've had so many. We've had so many others paving the way. But this kid, and what I really got a kick out of, I hope you watched the ceremony. Uh, it, it was unbelievable because he stood head and shoulders over every other Heisman winner except Plunkett, and and a couple of others. But this guy's like nine feet tall, and he's the real deal, and he's such a nice guy, and he's such a role model, and we're so proud of him. Yeah, and, I, and you know this. We hope that he could propel him to win a national championship. That would be a, again another feat for him to be the Heisman to lead. And win these next two. Hey, games I don't want to say I don't want to say I don't like people, but I don't like Jameis much at all. I like Seamus Jameis. Uh, you know, I, I want to see Mario to go in there and spank those guys. <laughs> yeah, but it, you know what? It comes down to just like like just like what we're talking about. It comes down to who has the best defense is going to win this win the whole championship. And I, you, I knew you'd put a twist on it sometime. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Alabama, Alabama does not have the defense. I think out of those four, I think Ohio State, even though they have a third string quarterback. They have the best defense out of the group. Yeah, pretty exciting, don't you think? Uh, oh. One one thing, though, well, final question. You know, as a former NFL guy yourself, is it sometimes hard to wrap your mind around how much some of these young people are getting coming out of college? I mean, look, Mariota uh, with this with this Heisman, that's worth a million bucks. Uh, uh, you know, plus. Well, he'll be getting 25 million. He, he should be the first-round pick. He'll be at least getting 25 guaranteed yeah, million yeah, dollars yeah. on that pass by the but. Yeah, he, he's a good man. I mean, and it's great for the Polynesians. It's great for the Hawaiian. It's just, it's just an awesome thing to see that that he's the best college football player. You know, in the as, game. A, as a part Maori, do you, do you feel you know like umbilical to this kid? Absolutely, <laughs> it's a pride deal. It's a pride deal. It's a family deal. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a tribe. So it's great. Well, it's always a pleasure hooking up, and I've been watching, hey, listen, I've been watching Ellison on the football field, the new Ellison. I mean, your kids, I mean, you know, isn't, it, isn't that another fun thing? And, 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 I, and I think maybe the bonding ability between you and your son, it, because you, you both have been there and done that, must be a wonderful thing. I mean, you know, come on. Whenever there's a son playing in the NFL after a dad and doing well, it must be a great thing when they can compare notes. Well, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's 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 to me, it's more about character and, yeah. and character leadership. That he, you know, he he's not caught up in the, in some of the things that are going bad for the NFL. That he's leading that yeah. charge of character. I hope he can. I hope he meets Marcus pretty soon. I'm sure he will. Yeah, yeah, I don't I'm think he'll be on the same team. I think we got our first round pick last year, so yeah, with yeah, Teddy see. Bridgewater. But I yeah. think. Yeah, Marcus is going to be going to a, a typical get, team hey, when he goes hey, in. Hey, I know you're a good negotiator, Ellison, but you're not going to get Marcus. <laughs> understand? I mean, I, and, and, and as a 49er guy, I'm bleeding gold and red right now. Well, he might get that. I mean, who and, knows what, what they're going to do with and, the 49ers? We're, we're praying for that one, man. We're praying. 
Yeah, that'd be great. Hey, I, Mike, I want to thank you for, for, for making that voice known for our soldiers that, that, are, that are doing those 12-month deployments, and let's get them and get our Congress and our government to bring them back down to nine-month yeah, deployments. And they deserve that. So hey, I thank hey, you for that voice on that. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, Ricky. We'll talk soon. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, aloha. Merry Christmas. There you go. Ricky Ellison, Missile Defense Ag- Advocacy Alliance. You want to go on mdaa.org. Uh, I mean, seriously. Uh, as a matter of fact, it, it, the, the proper uh, way you can get hooked up uh, is missiledefenseadvocacy.org, okay? Miss, uh, you can just Google it, but you'll find it. And, and uh, we love talking to Ricky, and we also love bringing you up to speed on what's happening in there. And remember, uh, what Ricky's guys do and what Missile Defense does, it knocks stuff down. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't shoot at people. It knocks their stuff down. Time to take a look at traffic, mail, and more on AM 690.